Hello, welcome back to Brand Sushi Live. In this episode, I just want to share uh, this bit of kind of experiment and workflow that I've been doing. Uh, so basically, a lot of tools available out there uh, currently to create some kind of avatar. Is this the one that currently I'm testing? Chat avatar from Hyperhuman, um, from what is it called? Hyperhuman by Demos.com. So you could uh, sign up and try yourself to create this uh, hyperhuman based on prompt or by providing image, image or photograph. Like this one look like a Tai Tai or Taylor Swift. You know, there's some kind of likeness sometimes to another human being. Uh, but in general, I, I actually prefer like a stylized look. Because if it's realistic and looking like other human, it's, you know, you don't, you kind of feel, okay, uh, maybe it's fun to try to act like another person, but to have a stylized, unique avatar is actually quite an interesting study. You know, uh, you can't just easily create human avatar. So this one, uh, so let, let me start with this. Okay, in the end, we, we, we we, you can create something like this inside Blender. So the animated human character head based on the, the character that you created using uh, Meta or other, or using chat avatar. But I'll, I'll explain the whole thing. So this character actually have eyeballs if I render it using cycles. Um, yeah, but it's a lot of complexity happening, but Let's start from here for now, okay? Uh, we could already create um, a look, a certain look based on photograph or drawings or perhaps by using prompting, right? So in this uh, setup using Comfy, Comfy UI and Stable Diffusions and using a certain model in this case, I'm using SDXL Turbo. Uh, I have something like this. So I created a, a character human person and this is all the properties. This is proper, uh, This is a node called Portrait Master by Stefano, Stefano Flore. Recently, he posted uh, on YouTube. So the custom node for Comfy UI have uh, some kind of list of text, you know, like a, whether it's a, whether it's nationality that you can change. Uh, let's try like Australian, Brazilian and just cue the prompt. Let's see, uh, it's gonna change the appearance of this character. Okay, so we get that. This is uh, the preview and this is going to be the refine refinement. It's going to take a lot longer. So it changed sli slightly, but kind of interesting. So Bulgarian, Bulgarian, Japan, that's right. Japanese or Korean and change the look based on that. So that's nationality, body type. We can make it overweight, underweight and the weight of the character and then the pose we can change the pose as well and you know like the basic stuff that creates a look of a model we can say korean south korean make the age we can make it older or younger at with the age slider here uh, face shapes round long of all you know all kind of um, like a generic human face can be created using AI to get a certain look so this is a uh, what I've been trying to play around with it's actually quite interesting uh, in we can actually make this almost like real time depending on your computer power if I if I turn on auto queue, so every few seconds it's gonna change. Queue the prompt, 
and I can now try to slide this so every few seconds the face gonna change you're gonna get a new look so this is uh, supposedly Bulgarian South Korean H let's say Indian give us like Indian look Indian and South Korean look we might get a darker skin or something maybe okay nationality mix mixer slightly like a Nepali or yeah let's try maybe We can also change the lighting, make it, make it moonlight. So yeah, it's a we can create some kind of character and the face also. I I think it's in general general it's pretty generic. If you actually uh, find a person on the street, you have more variations of course, and all the imperfections that you can find. The AI is most of the time is generic will create a generic look you can train it to look like uh some like a, another person but let's uh let's stop this let's try to find yeah so from here from this photo uh you can use it with a chat avatar and then uh, upload your own image and then try to generate it let me try to show you the process i'm using pinocchio config ui config ui output so this is the face i that i was experimenting with the face with the look of character so i quite like yeah this one okay this one for example upload it and it's gonna try to generate it maybe it's gonna take 10 minutes I don't know um, you can actually prompt a little bit more based on the photo so provide a photo and provide the text prompt and then uh, yeah and you can you can just generate it's gonna take a while but you can create a uh, like an assets 3d assets using this surface from hyperhuman including the body and if you want to but uh, what's important uh, i think the the teeth and the eyes and the blend shapes i think so the blend shapes currently it's animating i'm using this lifelink face like i said and just simply imported my recorded face animations it's probably a little bit strong for this character and sometimes with the blend shapes that's auto generated and also depending on the the teeth shape of the character you will get a, a different different look this one is totally overly expressive sometimes looks looks all right maybe i need to adjust the animations but I'll I'll show you the process. So, so we can animate a face uh, using. In this case, I'm using my iPhone. I record it using the Live Link face uh, um, app. But I'll show you the process of importing. So, in order to import the Hyperhuman, we actually need to have this Hyperhuman package importer add-on. Hyperhuman importer. So file import and if we click here we're gonna be taken into this this screen and maybe okay we can close this actually okay I need to close this reopen blender I will I want to show you the the process of importing the face okay this one okay I got a face I need to pack it the process is seems quite fast okay rig 
Oh, we don't need rig body. We just need eye teeth, blend shapes. And that's the amount of points. Asian young female, but I, this one is supposed to have darker skin. Overall, I'd, I tested the the image to 3D face avatar. So far, the result looks very average human male and between male and female. So it's not quite female. It's not quite male, but it's kind of average. But you can see here the comparison. Okay, there's a slight difference with the eyes and the lips and the nose. So it's not exact, not exactly, but it's pretty good, I guess, for something that's automated. It's going to get better to get the likeness of the original photo, but but let's try, okay, let's download this, download. So it's actually, the, the process is faster than before. Oh, okay, this is uh, another experiment. Uh, with the prompt that's being generated from Confi UI, I also use um, so this prompt, right? That's being generated on the fly. It's actually kind of interesting. You can use this, copy paste, and then try try to generate. Try to generate result. So I quite like some of this look, these illustrations. Um, the pose actually, uh, yeah, with uh, use, I'm using DrawThings app. With DrawThings app, you have, uh, of course, control net. You can use pose, depth, and you know, to get a pose of character. Maybe at some point, we can make the character to wear certain clothing and shoes as well. It's not 3D, but this is also a different ways to visualize your ideas of a character avatar. So this character, oh, we get something. Should get something from Hyperhumans. Pack finish. Did I download it? Yeah, I think I downloaded it. File, import, Hyperhuman package, import. Get from this. Yeah, 2K, default, I blend shape back texture confirm yes okay it's gonna work in cycles engine only so it's been created now it's hiding behind default cube so we have our character this is without texture this one with texture but uh, the eyes won't be 